Politics of modern China at the University of Oxford, and today we're going to talk about China, its relationship with Russia, its relationship with America. What are you going to tell me? I hope we can talk, Kieran, about the way in which China and Russia have had, actually, for quite a long period, quite an ambivalent relationship in which they're friends, they're partners, but they also don't quite trust each other, and how that's playing out. I want to talk about China's economy as well. I think that that's one of the big global stories at the present moment, post COVID. China is desperately trying to get its growth rate back to be able to actually provide that middle class lifestyle for its people. And I'd also like to talk a little bit about that COVID、uh, crisis that was, of course, the biggest story in the world out of China. Now it seems to have almost disappeared. Now that those regulations have been ended just a few m- months ago, but how are things going off the back of that? And is it really the case that those regulations are never going to come back? Ron Mita, I want to start by discussing how China marks. The one-year anniversary of the Russian invasion of Ukraine, with their sort of twelve-point plan of peace, it sort of spoke a lot of generals about avoiding nuclear war, of all the parties staying rational and exercising constraint. You know, but it also did discuss and warned about expanding military blocs, which some people saw as a sort of nod to accusations of NATO expansion. I guess. Why do you think they had this twelve-point? 